Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Many women in our 60 and Me community are considering retiring overseas, and many are interested in a place called Portugal, which was actually voted by International Living in their Global Retirement Index this year as the number one destination. So I've got a guest today that's going to talk to us about Portugal. Trisha Pimentel is the country correspondent for International Living in uh, Portugal. She's also um, an interesting woman. She was born in the States in Brooklyn, but she uh, went with her husband to Portugal about eight years ago and has just fallen in love with it. Uh, she's an author and a blogger and she's written her own books, three books of her own, which were award-winning books, but she's also done some incredible resources for international living. There's a video series on Portugal, which is a 15 video series, and also um, a book called Escape to Portugal. So welcome, uh, Tricia. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you, Morgan. It's great to be here with you. Well, I'm excited about Portugal. We've done a couple of other uh, videos on um, the practicalities of Portugal and also on, you know, just the things you love about it. But I thought it'd be fun to chat with you since you've been there for eight years now about the real place, like what it's really like day to day, like the people that you meet, the kind of quirkiness or the idiosyncrasies. Tell us about Portugal, the real Portugal. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, the, uh, as we, I said in another video, uh, the people are just wonderful, incredibly warm, eager to uh, be of assistance to you in any way possible. They're a very polite, formal per, uh, people. And so when you meet someone for the first time, uh, even the, if uh, when children meet, they will shake your hand and uh, uh -huh. you, children will kiss you on both cheeks. Yeah. and say, very nice to meet you, prazer, pleasure. Uh, and very quickly, it goes from just shaking a hand, for instance, well, between men and women, two kisses on both cheeks. The only one, people who don't kiss really are men and men, and then they hug each other. Yeah. So and they're very warm, very warm people. Cuddly people, huggy and people, very, I like that. Very, very huggy and uh, very polite with titles. Oh, my husband and I really cracked up one time when we first moved here and we got our, I think it was an electric bill. And there were, there were all these initials. So it was like EX period, uh, SR period. And it was like, it all stood for like, Exterminadora, Doctora, Mesenora, all this stuff. <laughs> it's like they're putting you on the pedestal like you're, you know, the prince of the country. You're a celebrity. <laughs> and, uh, and they call you, if you have a degree, from uh, like I have a, a bachelor's in uh, French, they I would be entitled to be called a doctor. So they're very big into their titles and and all that kind of stuff. Respectful. Uh, I have some nice. very respectful. I have uh, some notes that I just oh and um, <laughs> when they say goodbye in in turn on on the telephone particularly, they say it about twenty five times because they don't want to feel like they're hanging up on you. It's literally his mindset. So if, you're thinking, oh, if you would, wow. and I would say, okay, Margaret, I'll talk to you later. And okay, ciao, and you hang up. They say, con licenza, like with your permission. And I look until, you know, uh, we'll talk soon. And Eugene with little kisses. And this literally can go on for approximately 45 <laughs> seconds to a minute That's between funny. the two people. Like you can never get off the phone. And when you see them in person, uh, they can frequently tend to be a little late for business meetings and so late. But if you invite somebody to come for dinner, no more than 15 minutes late. Well, that's pretty much in any culture. Well, uh, that okay. we would have to be involved in. <laughs> okay, your, your, your sound went away there for a second, but I'll just repeat, because you just said basically that they're often late for things and you know maybe 15 minutes late, maybe not too late, but um, yeah, I don't know what you're, 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 you're it's because you're in Portugal, it's, it's probably, the sun is probably interfering with the uh, connection. You know what, I think honestly, because we have, um, uh, um, what is it called, fiber optics, so uh -huh. it's not, not the cable, but we're having a really misty gray day right now. It's coming and going and the sun going in and out. So I apologize no, for no, that. No, no, you're back I'm, now. It's I'm not in control of everything. <laughs> so what you basically said is that the people so are, are awesome. So yeah. They are. And uh, when you, when you uh, dine with them, it's very hard to pick up a check. It's extremely difficult when we go out with <laughs> With friends, it's over and over. We, you know, we fight. We just did this with our accountants recently, a couple of days ago, 
and we really owed them a, a lunch, so to speak. And That's they do a fantastic. lot of extra things for us, and we couldn't pick, pick up the check. When you go to dinner at a house, you don't uh, never bring a wine unless you know exactly what it tastes is of the host or hostess. You can bring yeah. chocolate yeah. or flowers or our, um, cake, dessert or so. Mm-hmm. But the, um, another thing about the mindset of the people is it's all about getting a, uh, a situation solved or resolved. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite stories is we were at a, a big festival, a bread festival in Mafra where we used to live. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> there was going to be an equestrian show that evening. And so a horse trailer pulled up and it wasn't like a normal it must have had 20 or 30 horse. I don't know. The thing was enormous. Yeah. And someone yeah. had parked on the apron in the parking lot. And they were uh, the, the bis- big trailer was unable to get to where it needed to be. Yeah. And we watched, my husband and I were just saying, like, how are they going to work this out? And the police were there. And police came and enlisted the help of pedestrians nearby in the parking lot. And all of them picked up the car, which was a big BMW sedan, moved it aside, the horse trailer went by, and then the police and the people put the car back in place, and everybody <laughs> left. There was no ticket, yeah. no towing, <laughs> just let's solve the problem and move on with it. Very uh, there, there's a, a very practical, and also practical in the sense that we're used to maybe when we go to the DMV uh, in the United States and you take a ticket uh, for your to wait in line. You take a ticket for everything here, whether it's to buy a roll or a chicken breast or to get your residency renewed. There, you, you wait in line and uh, they, one of the negatives uh, is, well, it's not negative if you have a, a, a small child with you or with child in other ways all those people are given priority. So you might have ticket number 10 and five people come in all with their babies and strollers and suddenly you'll be number 15 because they give priority. But what this does, Margaret, is the, the, it's, a, it's a mentality of waiting. Like when your turn comes, you will be able to spend, if you need to spend 20 minutes with the person picking out what kind of flowers you mm-hmm, want mm-hmm. or, or what. You're, it's like you're on, it's you're your in the time. spotlight, yeah. Yeah. it's your time. Yeah. And so you That's might cool. be irritated with the person in front of you who is telling about how their grandmother is uh, celebrating her 90th birthday and come <laughs> Saturday and, all, and you just want to, <laughs> I just want to buy but, this bread, please. <laughs> so, so Trisha, but, go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. It, it contributes to a sense of, yeah. you know what? It's okay. I can roll with this. I love it. Tell us about the, take us to a market or take us to a shop. What's, what are the shops like? Well, everything like you would see in the United States, uh, large department stores, uh, uh, grocery store stores mm-hmm. here are called hyper mercados. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like maybe like what, uh, like Walmart type thing, except uh, mostly food mm-hmm. and then little other things, uh, small appliances and uh, clothing items and mm-hmm. paper goods and bookstore and all that kind of stuff incorporated in it. So you have those, you have little mom and pop markets, lots of outdoor markets or indoor municipal markets that look like an outdoor market with a cover on them in an mm-hmm, mm-hmm. old stone building with arched ways and, and everything. So it, it all, it's all here. It's, it's quite a variety and you might not be able to find every single solitary thing. You might not be able to find Jif peanut butter, but you'll find certain, maybe you'll find Skippy uh, or and the equivalent. So it's, we have never been able to not find what we need here. So t- is there, is there anything that's unique about the, 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 the place that, that you, that you really find uh, interesting? Like um, I was, I was, when I was in Porto recently, I went to the Lello bookstore and um, that's, a, that's another thing. You had, you, when you said buy a ticket, you have to actually buy a ticket to go inside the bookstore because it's so, so popular. But when I went in there, I was really surprised how respectful people were of letting the ones take, if people wanted to take a picture of that stairway you know, the, the really famous stairway and people were letting people go ahead just to take the picture. And then they, then they all went in, but it's just this kind of sense of, um, Oh, I don't know. It's like a, um, like a drama. Like they, it's kind of like 
processes have a everything has a place has, and a time is that well and, did I and notice yeah something? you're exactly you hit on something yeah. uh, actually very very real uh, one example of this uh, permission and politeness is we went to a medieval festival we're always going to one some kind of <laughs> festival they have festivals yeah. for garlic and bread and wine and yeah. everything but we went to a medieval festival and it, parking was tough because it was crowded so we were waiting in the parking lot and passed by a spot and immediately after a person backed out of that spot and it was open and we just didn't see that that was happening now we had somebody behind us anywhere else that i know of in the world they would have gone in that yeah. person would have gone in instead the person behind us backed up two car lights to permit us to back up to go, to take the spot because we were yeah, there first of all yeah. you know and well actually the, but it also works the other way if you're standing in line at one of these big <laughs> supermarkets and you have you know a bottle of soda and they have 10 carts those 10 carts are going to go first because they got there first. <laughs> okay. So we talked about the people. I, I have another question, just on a final one, just because this is so lovely just to get a kind of little deep dive into the world of Portugal is what is it like uh, in terms of infrastructure, like, um, you know, banks and uh, getting stuff done and uh, finding help, you know, help. And what's, what's that like? The infrastructure is great that we have discovered. I don't know if the only thing that is negative that we have found is trying to get um, someone to come out to do a meter reading or to do something, fix something. Yeah. But this happens anywhere. You can yes, sit home yeah. all day long and wait for <laughs> the UPS delivery and it's going to come two days from, you know, exactly. in, in the United States or anywhere. Uh, the, the roads are fabulous. Unless you're in a teeny, teeny village that where it's a dirt road and it's a cobblestone area, of course, that's, that's part and parcel of that. But in terms of the super, the highways, the roads, it's very, very well maintained. There's recycling bins and garbage, huge garbage things all over, mm -hmm. even in the small mm -hmm. villages. Very into recycling here. The, uh, there was something else that you said that I wanted to touch on with... Um, about banking? the infrastructure banking thank you yeah banking here the system is fabulous you can go to what we call here a multi banco which is the atm and not only just take cash out you can pay your taxes you can uh, pay for there's one way as living in portugal mm -hmm. as different mm -hmm. events like valentine's day dinner thanksgiving dinner i can go to my atm and key in properly and pay for my ticket for that get my receipt and i'm done i'm paid there, there's great. so many you can buy tickets That's to conference great. there it, it's it's i think way ahead of other systems i've seen to tell you the truth and i bet there's all kinds of festivals as well and and uh weekend activities and um you know just sort of i guess religious holidays too L lots of religious holidays and also like i said festivals for all kind of uh, food and drink <laughs> and uh, in, in our big, you know, <laughs> it's an artichoke festival, but well, and not artichoke, that would be asparagus maybe, but um, the, they're also in the larger cities like Porto and Lisboa, uh, they have large arenas like Mayo Arena and uh, I've gone to here, I don't know if you're familiar with or remember or love uh, Charles Aznavour, Oh, the, yes, the of course. French yeah, singer. yeah. Charles My husband treated us uh, to tickets for that. And everybody, and to Maroon 5, uh, to yeah. Nova, uh, uh, Brazilian groups. Yeah. So there are huge concerts, Diana Crawl. So you can find that down to the smallest little village that has an Oompa band going by. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all here. It's all Tricia, you have, uh, this has been a really great conversation because I think you've kind of just normalized Portugal. Like you've just made it like a human place. And if you're thinking about retiring overseas and you, you've, you've done your homework and you know, like it ticks all the boxes for you. It's like, it's, it's got the great weather. It's got the culture. It's got whatever. You now can see that it's got people just like you, you know, they're, they're having fun and living their life, respecting each other and, and peace and harmony, hopefully. <laughs> but um, I, I would really encourage you to go out to internationalliving.com and check out the, uh, the, the resources that Tricia has written. Is this a skip to Portugal through International Living as well? 
It is. Yep. And you can also, on the site itself, internationalliving.com, yep. you can, if you click on countries and then uh, other countries and all countries, then you, uh, I've written a number of articles there. There's a short video. Oh, cool. So you can get your feet wet in there. And then you can also, at their bookstore, you can purchase uh, other things as okay. well. Okay. So, yeah, the so, video series looks good too, the 15 part yeah. video series on Portugal. So, you know, and I think that as we said in another video, Tricia encourages you, if you're thinking about retiring to Portugal, go there, just go for a month, you know, just go and um, check out her, all her stuff. So you have some little guidebook in your, in your mind to what to follow. And, um, and as you were mentioning also, we'll mention it again in this video that there's some events coming up. Now we're recording this in, in February. So um, if you're watching this later in, this is 2020, you might might not you know it might be too late or whatever but there's one coming up in la in this april 2020 and april also, 2nd or 4th yes. yeah and then in may 2020 in europe in, in portugal and then another another one in where was it did you say atlanta in october atlanta in october those are 2020 so if you're um around and you're interested check out the internationalliving.com website it's all it's all there so uh, thank you trisha i don't I actually don't want to hang up i want to hear more i know <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sure we'll have to be talking again in the future and margaret thank you for asking me and uh, i i enjoyed every bit of it if you enjoyed this video please consider supporting me on patreon our Patreon supporters help us to make a bigger difference in the lives of women over 60 all around the world. They get exclusive videos, live video shows, discounts, and much more. So please look for the link on this page. It is somewhere down here, up there. <laughs> and join our tribe of women in our 60 and Me community who are actually making a big difference in the world, challenging aging stereotypes. So thank you so much for your support.